the recording to start. Recording has started. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to BC214. Uh, we're going to pray and get started. And uh, hopefully the others will get in, join the class soon. All right, so um, John, would you like to just pray with us and we'll start? Sure, Pastor. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this morning. We pray and bless this time of learning. Pray, of God, that your word will come in power and we would be able to understand with its significance. We pray that we would be uh, enriched by your word and uh, enable us to um, teach others and equip others also yeah, because your uh, your coming is near, God. We pray that you would anoint a pastor to uh, release your word, oh God. And we thank you for all of us uh, could come together to, in your presence to seek your face, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining the class, especially... Yeah, Enoch, Abu Bakr, Isaac. I know you're joining us from Africa. Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, Africa. Yes, and it's probably very early in the morning there. So thank you for the sacrifice uh, all of you are making to get up early and uh, attend class. Uh, it's amazing. May the thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you for the sacrifice. Yeah. Yes. And may the Lord richly bless you for uh, what you're doing. Amen. Okay. So we are doing this course on the end times. Uh, I'll just quickly review what we have covered last week as we have introduced. Um, you know, the Bible as a prophetic book, we went through some examples where uh, the prophecies in the Bible, which are so amazing, some given hundreds of years ahead of time, some given thousands of years ahead of time, have, have been fulfilled. And we just mentioned a few. But we did that last, you know, went through it just to, give us the confidence or show us that the Bible is a very amazing prophetic book, history written in advance. And therefore, as we go into studying prophetic scripture, we go with the confidence knowing that the things that have been written will surely be fulfilled. So we will review that very quickly. Uh, then we will review, we'll talk a little bit about the terminology used in the Bible concerning the end times and how to understand that. So we'll do that. And then the next two lessons um, are kind of historical information, historical geographical information. Uh, some people enjoy that. Some people don't like, like too much of history and geography. Uh, so I don't know how you will react to it. But um, we will have two lessons, one looking at the Middle East, and then one looking at Israel very specifically. The reason is, as we start looking at prophetic scripture, this context, the historical and geographical context, is very useful uh, for us to understand prophetic scripture. So that's the reason uh, we have these two lessons. One looking at um, the Middle East, and one looking at Israel specifically. And I will not, you know, I'll try to keep it uh, simple. Uh, and of course, both the documents are in the class, classwork in, in Google, so you can, uh, you can take it and, you know, read it. But it's very good to have that background so that uh, you will be able to, you know, when we under, when you go into prophetic scripture and start looking at end time prophecy, uh, this information will be useful. So that's what uh, that's our plan for today. Um, I will try to finish that. So then from next week, we start getting into um, Bible prophecy, the sequence of events, and so on. So let's quickly review uh, what we did 
last week, we were talking about the Bible as a prophetic book, and we mentioned some of the prophecies, talked about the Egyptian slavery, the Babylonian captivity. Uh, we talked about uh, the mention of Cyrus, the king who would send Israel, Jewish people back to Jerusalem. We talked about the Daniel's prophecy about the coming of Christ, uh, you know, uh, 483 years before, I mean, from the time of going back to Jerusalem to the coming of the Messiah. He prophesied um, several prophecies concerning Christ himself um, that are throughout the Old Testament scriptures. The destruction of the temple, uh, the dispersion regathering of Israel, 3,500 years before God spoke. He said, this is what I'm going to do. And he kept repeating that prophecy through various prophets, that word through various prophets, and it was eventually fulfilled. 1948, when Israel was established as a nation in their own land over there. Then we spent time in Matthew 24, chapter 24, looking through that chapter and uh, just breaking it down so that we understand how Jesus gave us signs of the times. And that chapter, Matthew 24, can be broken into three sections. One is the signs leading up to the tribulation, then what's happening during the tribulation. And after that, Jesus gives us exhortation, saying how to be ready for the end times. So if you, Matthew 24 can be very clearly divided into those sections. And uh, if you look at it that way, it's it's simple, easy to understand. Uh, Matthew 24, Luke 21, and also Mark 13. These are all parallel uh, scriptures in the Gospels. So we went through that. I will not be repeating it here. It's 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 in the notes for you to follow. So we just divide this to two sections. Um, the the remaining verses of Matthew 24 are the exhortation, uh, how to be ready uh, for the coming of the Lord. So we'll we'll start from here today. Um, in the in the Bible, both Old Testament and New Testament, there is terminology of phrases that are used to reference the end times. So, and all of us in, in, in the reading of scripture, we would have come across these terms. Example, last days, the time of the end, and I'm just quickly going through the, here all the references. The latter days, the day of the Lord, the day of wrath, the last day, used in singular, end of the age, end of the ages, ends of the ages, sorry, and end of the ages, the last hour, the coming of the Lord, the appearing of the Lord, the revelation of Jesus Christ, or when he appears, or his coming. Um, uh, so these are some of the phrases, and I've give, we've given all the references here. So these are some of the phrases that are used, or terminology used, Old, in the Old Testament and New Testament, to refer to the end times. Now, what I want to just uh, mention to us is that these are pointing to a time period, but they're not, you know, it's not like every time this phrase is used, it's referring to exactly the same period. For example, the day of the Lord. It's a very, very broad, you know, statement. So you, if, if you go through all of these scriptures, we will find that this phrase, day of the Lord, can be talking about something happening in the last days. It is, so the day of the Lord is always not is not always referring to the precise event or precise moment in the last days. The phrase, Day of the Lord, could refer to different events. Like if you look in all of these scriptures, it could be used to refer to different events in 
the end times example the uh, Zechariah 14 in the day of the Lord there is in Zechariah 14 he's talking specifically when the Lord comes and descends on Mount Olives so the phrase the day of the Lord and in that chapter is referring is referring to something but the same phrase day of the Lord can be used in first Corinthians 5 5 to refer to a time of judgment uh, when we will give an account to the Lord uh, it can be used first Thessalonians 5 2 again in a very generic sense that when the Lord Jesus returns for for the church to take the church away in 2nd Peter 3 10 the day of the Lord is referring to the time when the earth will be renovated by fire meaning it's after the great white throne judgment just before the new heavens and the new earth I was giving you examples so the same phrase day of the Lord is being used in many scriptures but it can be used to refer to different things happening in the end times we know day of the Lord yes it's he's pointing to the end times something in the end time but the specific will depend on the passage where it is being used so and and, and all of these phrases you know like example the latter days now we find it being used many times or the last days uh, last day or last days uh, uh, in the latter day uh, it's all being used many times but depending on where and how it is used it could refer to something different in the end times the reason I uh, I want to point that out is we must be careful how we interpret the same phrase from different Bible passages. The rule is interpret it correctly depending on the context of the passage. Right? So you have to look at okay, in this passage, what is he specifically talking about? Okay. So that means that same phrase, day of the Lord, or last day, or, you know, uh, that same phrase is speaking of something different in the end time period, based uh, given this particular passage. Now, if we make the mistake saying the day of the Lord always refers to this particular event, and we put it in every passage, it will be very, it'll, you know, it, it won't, It'll be very messy. We will. It won't. We won't be able to interpret correctly. So the same phrase, as we have mentioned many phrases, um, but it is used differently, and depending on the context, we on the passage, we will understand what it is specifically referring to. Okay, so please keep that in mind. It's just a general guidance on how to interpret these terminologies used concerning the end times. They're all concerning the end times, but they are referring to different things that happen during the end times. Classic example, one more example is last days. Last days, okay, it's a phrase uh, that is used about the end times. Yeah, we understand it, but it is used differently in different places. Example. Acts 2 17. It'll come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yeah. He's talking about the last days, but he's talking about something different here. He's talking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the movement, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit um, uh, upon people. So last days, but specifically referring to Holy Spirit. Second Timothy 3 1. Paul is writing, in the last days, the Holy Spirit is telling that uh, there will come scoffers, there will come people whose love has grown cold, there will be haters of each other and so on. Yeah, he's talking about the last days, but in 2 Timothy 3, he's talking about something different. He's talking about people who are very hateful and um, 
so on uh, is giving a different is the focus is something different so like that now again in the last days this is used in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 he says in the last days God has spoken to us through his son whom he has made the heir of all things oh now it's something different he's using the same phrase last days but he's talking about the incarnation he's talking about Jesus Christ coming into this world as a physical expression of God so now we say oh the last days actually started when Christ came so totally different this last days act 2 17 is talking about here physically literally AD 30 this last day 2nd Timothy 3 1 is talking towards the end of the last days Hebrews 1 2 last days talking about Christ being born into this world so same phrase last days but different time positioning he's this one is positioned on the day of Pentecost when the church began and it will continue on till the end second Timothy 3 1 Paul is writing yes he's referencing his time but specifically also speaking about how people will behave towards the end of time Hebrews 1 2 last days talking about the birth of you know how the incarnation of Jesus so same phrase used in different Bible passages referring to different things happening and also different positioning in calendar time right? so we have to interpret the phrase last days depending on the context the passage where it is being used um, just again highlighting it uh, uh, I hope that it's clear any questions on that let me pause and see uh, is that clear uh, any questions on that okay so uh, feel free to ask any questions right so uh, all of the, these uh, you know phrases that we need to understand now I go to the we go to the next chapter the next lesson where like we said we're going to talk about the Middle East and then we're going to talk about Israel and this is the background this is background information for us as we get into Bible prophecy so let's talk about the Middle East and the surrounding regions uh, this is important for us to understand so we know in the Bible that the Middle East is very significant because right from the very beginning the Garden of Eden was located somewhere between the Tigris and the Euphrates River right so if you look at the world map today where are these two rivers flowing through the Euphrates River and the Tigris they flow through this Middle East region primarily they're going through Turkey they're going through Syria they're going through Iraq right? so this is very important to know the Garden of Eden was located somewhere here between or between these rivers or around these rivers when God promised Abraham when God called Abraham he called him out of the earth of the Chaldees which was somewhere you know in Iraq and he told him to make this journey down into this land of Canaan that is around you know Jerusalem and here but he said God said from the river Euphrates in the north to the river Nile in the south that's the land I am giving to you that's the land I'm giving to you so God promised this whole region to Abraham and his descendants right so um, we will you know we will look at that when we get get in the next chapter on Israel but that is very interesting so, so so it is very interesting very important geographically that a lot of the action uh, uh, and things spoken of in the Bible is happening in this region of the world right so it is good for us to know okay these are the countries involved Turkey Syria Iraq of course Israel there's Jordan uh, Lebanon uh, somewhere here 
and uh, then is Egypt in the south. So those are countries that are involved here. It's important for us to know. That is one part. Then when we go into Bible prophecy, Daniel, the uh, prophet Daniel, he uh, prophesied about coming world empires. So he was living during the time of the Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar, until his grandson Belshazzar. And then after that, Daniel, and during that time, Daniel prophesied about the coming world empires. God showed him that. And we will look at it in the book of Daniel uh, in, in our third year when we study Daniel and Revelation. So Daniel prophesied. He spoke about the Medes and the Persians. He spoke about the Greek and the Roman Empire. And then Daniel described that, uh, you know, so you can, we can look at the, this is just a little table to show, you know, what we see in the various chapters of Daniel and what they actually represent, the empires that they represent. Uh, don't worry too much about it. This is just a quick summary. We will look into detail on this next year when you study Daniel. So Daniel prophesied about this. And then he mentioned that there would be a time when the Roman Empire, the iron and clay would be mixed. This is in Daniel chapter 2. Clay representing all the other nations, uh, people of other nations. Iron representing the Roman Empire, that region. They would be mixed. And from here will come ten toes or ten horns or ten leaders. And then another leader will come who will displace or take control of three of these ten leaders. And that is the Antichrist, that other leader. He even said that this empire, the Greek empire, referring to Alexander the Great, who will expand his empire very quickly, he will suddenly die. He will die very young. He will die suddenly. And Daniel prophesied that the Greek Empire will be split into four parts, which will be governed by these four leaders who were under the main leader, which was Alexander the Great. And from one of those four, the Antichrist will come. The little horn will come. He prophesied that. So sure enough, uh, Alexander the Great came. He expanded his territory very fast, all the way to northern part of India, from there, from Greece. But he died very young. And when he died, his empire was divided into four parts. And four of his generals were overseeing this, just as Daniel prophesied it happened. And then later, the Roman Empire took over that whole region. And Daniel said, you know, he, he gave the sequence of events that will happen. So this whole part is very interesting for us. The region that was covered by the Greek Empire, the region that was covered by the Roman Empire. And, and I will give you a map later on. You'll see it. It is very interesting for us because it is part of the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And especially it's kind of giving us idea of the 10 leaders who will come and then the little horn who will come who will be the Antichrist. He, it's very interesting for us to look into it. So a little bit more. So what happened here after the Roman Empire is Islam came to power. It took over a large part of the Middle East and Northern Africa. Uh, uh, Islam, you know, through their uh, uh, expansion. Uh, of course, part of it was militant. Militant expansion covered, took over a lot of the Middle East and Northern Africa. So now you have these um, Arab nations all around Israel, 22 Arab nations surrounding um, all of that region. And uh, Israel is a tiny piece of land you'll see in this map. Israel is so tiny. And surrounding Israel as a nation, 
are all these nations that are actually Arab nations because Islam spread through all this region right and here is Israel a tiny little nation uh, in the Middle East uh, in the Mediterranean and all of these regions are Arab nations surrounding Israel the Arab nations are quite powerful because of the oil reserves so it's like they're controlling the lifeblood of the global economy because of oil and so they are very influential in that sense in the global economy what we see happen over time is Israel was formed as a nation 1948 Prior to that, we had Egypt, Iraq, and then Syria, all of these nations coming in, the Arab nations establishing themselves, their own identities. And all these are happening, you see, within the last century or so, all of them have come into prominence here in the Middle East. So Israel declared itself as a nation founded itself as a nation May 14, 1948 and right after that there were some intense battles that were fought right? and till today the conflict continues between the Palestinians oh, who are Arabs predominantly and Israel, the Jewish community so there is this constant struggle going on and we will talk more about this in the next lesson where we focus in on Israel but this constant struggle going on and it is literally something God spoke ahead of time that Jerusalem would be the center of conflict and it is literally going on today almost every week or every other week in the news we are hearing you know what's happening in the Middle East between the Palestinians and Israel right so we're hearing that we'll talk a little bit more on that in the next lesson so that part of the world is important and then like I said Europe and the former Roman Empire is important because now this is going back in time this was the region of the Roman Empire right so if you compare this with today's world map you see Northern Africa parts of uh, the Middle East, parts of Europe, all around the Mediterranean. That was the territory covered by the Roman Empire. Daniel spoke about it as in Daniel chapter 2, he talked about the feet of iron, which was the Roman Empire. Or he spoke about, in Daniel chapter 7, he spoke about this terrible beast um, you're talking about a kingdom that would be very very extensive very strong very powerful and that of course was referring to the Roman Empire that covered all of this region so what Daniel had said was there will come a time when iron would be mixed with clay that means iron referring to the Roman Empire mixed with clay referring to being mixed with people of all other races and that is what we are seeing today that in this area in this whole region which was formerly part of the Roman Empire uh, there is a mix of people happening you know so it's not like just yes that historically um, that was the iron the Roman Empire but now it's just all people, all kinds of people living there, all mixed. And he said, there will come 10 leaders from here, 10 toes, 10 leaders, 10 horns. And then they will rise another horn from what used to be the Greek Empire. And so broadly speaking, when Alexander's, Alexander 
uh, uh, you know, so when Alexander's empire was uh, divided, there were, so from Greece, that is somewhere here, uh, his empire was divided into four major areas, Greece, Turkey, Syria, and Egypt, right? So this region, the Greek empire, of course, the Roman empire was much bigger, uh, but the Greek empire, Greece, this area, Turkey, that's right, this area, Syria, that's this area, and Egypt, this area. So now I'm saying area because it's not, it, it, you know, it is not exactly where Egypt is. It, you know, it's in that region. So the Greek empire was broken into these four parts. And Daniel said, from one of these parts will come the little horn, the Antichrist. So we don't want to pinpoint and say, okay, it's going to be from Turkey or specifically Syria. We are saying this region, right? So, of course, today Turkey makes makes up major part, but here in this region, we have multiple countries, Greece and a couple of other countries here. Similarly, here in this region, we have multiple countries. We have Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Israel. Here also we have. Okay, so but this is the region, this is the area, and. He says, from, he, Daniel said, from one of these areas will come the little horn. That is very clear in, in, prophecy, in, in, in Daniel's prophecy. Okay, So this whole area is very interesting for us. And now today's map, so that's why I mentioned, highlighted Greece, Egypt, Turkey, Syria, broadly speaking, uh, because these were part of the Greek Empire, later became part of the Roman Empire. And Daniel said, from one of these four regions, the Antichrist will come, the small horn. That now, if you look at today's world map, right, these regions are important because remember, the Roman Empire covered this part, this part uh, of uh, the world. Uh, and and I'm not, we're not seeing the, the northern part of Africa, but it covered all of that. So uh, what's happening here is of m much interest, and uh, the Middle East and so on. Now, many of these countries actually now are part of the European Union. So uh, it's of interest to us how all these things are unfolding because from somewhere here, there will be 10 leaders, 10 significant leaders who will emerge. And then we will see the rise of a little leader who will take control of three of these leaders and influence them. We will, you know, we'll get into the scriptures on that. So this whole region is important. It's interesting to see what's going on in Europe, Northern Africa, Middle East, and so on. Okay. So here we are just giving us a little bit more of that same map. These are the countries that are involved. So when we say Greece, there is Greece, but then there's also other countries like Bulgaria, Macedonia, that were all part of this section of the Greek Empire. Then there was Greek, Turkey, uh, that was also broken up. So we look carefully at these, what's happening here, how these things, how these countries are moving, so on. Right. So whatever I've said, you know, I've, I've, I've written it here so you can read it uh, about these 10 leaders and Ten nations that are coming. Russia is also very interesting because the Bible is speaking of Russia. Uh, we'll read about this in Ezekiel 38 uh, and uh, a Ezekiel prophesied about uh, the king of the north. Now, Moscow is directly north of Jerusalem. If you look at the world map, Moscow, capital of Russia, is directly north of Jerusalem. Ezekiel prophesied, there will be a king from the north, he will come. He will invade from the north. And he is going to be supported by Persia. Now, Persia is modern day Iran and Iraq. He will be supported by Ethiopia, Libya, Gomer, 
which are parts of Germany, Slovakia, to Garma, which is Turkey and Egypt. So in Ezekiel 38, uh, Ezekiel mentions these names of these rulers and these countries. That means Ezekiel spoke. <coughs> Sorry. He spoke and said, the king from the north, and he mentions some of the tribes that which tribes which are today part of Russia. So that's why we know, and that's why we say it's from Russia, because the tribes that Ezekiel mentioned are tribes that are living. He mentions Rosh, for example. Rosh is a tribe that is part of today's Russia. So he says they will come and they will invade Israel and they will be supported by these nations. And today we are seeing that these nations, see, when Daniel was, sorry, when Ezekiel was prophesying, these were there, uh, these kingdoms were there, but they were not identified as nations. And here we are in the last 100 years. These nations have actually come into existence, including Israel. Like we said earlier, Egypt and Syria and Turkey and uh, uh, Jordan, these nations have all come into existence as political nations, independent nations. They've come into existence in the last hundred years. So it is all very interesting because this was spoken in Bible prophecy in the time of Ezekiel. And here we are, we are seeing these nations come into existence. And so then we start looking at how are they all aligning themselves with Russia and China, we'll also see. So it is interesting. How are these nations interacting with Russia? What is happening? How will, how will all this work out? So we are keeping an eye on these regions. Right? But Ezekiel prophesied, Ezekiel 38, 39, he said what will happen, how Russia will invade Israel, they'll be assisted by these Arab nations, uh, they'll be pushed back, uh, they will be, uh, and Israel as a little nation will, will, will stand against such a powerful big nation like Russia, stand against that. Right? Another interesting area that we need to think about is the Bible in Revelation 16 and then prior to that Revelation 9 talks about uh, a kings from the east. Now we will go through Revelation, you know, we'll give an overview of the book of Revelation so that we understand that. Um, uh, we, will, we will look at this. Uh, I'm just giving in, you know, mentioning it here as an introduction. So the Bible talks about kings from the east. So now we have to look eastward from Israel, Jerusalem, look east. So remember, he said, king from the north, north of Jerusalem, okay, Russia. Eastward, most likely China, most likely. And he talks about a, a, an army of over 200 million people. That's a very massive army, troops, which, um, you know, which the only nation that could ever, or the nations, two nations that could possibly have that kind of an army would be China and Russia. So he says, kings from the, the kings from the east will come towards Israel. So most likely we are saying China, Russia, and other countries who are joining them, they will move towards Israel. That is in the battle of Armageddon, the final invasion. So that is again interesting. So we keep in mind. So how about these nations uh, in the political situation globally? And we can see today, Russia and China, they are aligning themselves to each other. It's almost like there's there are the Western nations, United States, the United Kingdom, Europe, specifically Germany, France, who are leading those nations allied with each other. And then you have Russia, China, who seem to be in some sort of an alignment with each other. 
It's happening, right? It's, you know, why is it like that? Well, you can see it, this was already spoken of much ahead of time in the Bible, saying, you know, this kind of an alignment will be there and it will lead to the build up towards the battle of Armageddon. And then, in, in interest, uh, in connection with the battle of Armageddon, the Bible specifically zeroes in on a particular region of the world called the Jezreel Valley or the Valley of Megiddo. Megiddo. This is where the Battle of Armageddon will take place, the north of Israel, towards towards this part of Israel, uh, in the Jezreel Valley. And so, this is again interesting for us. And historically, this has been the region of many conflicts. So if you look at it historically, uh, historically over the 4,000 years, major, about 34 major conflicts have taken already taken place in the Megiddo Valley, or in the Valley of Jezreel, including when Napoleon and the British general uh, Allenby fought. And, uh, 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 General Allenby, the British general, he fought against the Ottoman Turks, and that was a time when Israel, some of the people that land, somehow gained their own, uh, I would say, significance at that time. And then later on, they handed the, that whole region back to the people, to Israel, and the British left. So this part, this part of the world is very significant. And what the Bible is clearly saying, Revelation 20, 16, the Bible mentions this region, the Jezreel Valley. And the Bible also mentions the river Euphrates will dry up. Right? And it will cause, it will facilitate a movement of armies towards this region. Now, very interesting that. Uh, the river Euphrates is actually drying up now uh, because of uh, you know, several factors, of course, that contribute to it. Uh, the drought that has been there, and then the way the water systems have been used. But in Revelation 16, during the second half of the tribulation, it will be dried up. Right? So now you can see it is beginning to dry up. But in Revelation, by the time we reach the second half of the tribulation, it will be dried up. Right? So I'm not saying we are in the tribulation, but I'm just saying, hey, it's a very interesting connection that this great river that has always been flowing, that has been very, you know, very significant. Revelation 16 and the second of the tribulation, the Bible says it will be dried up. And today it is beginning to dry up. It is. So it's it's interesting. And it will facilitate the movement of armies towards this region for a battle. The Battle of Armageddon will be fought here. Right? So that is also of interest for us as we look at what is happening. And the way the Battle of Armageddon take place is that kings from the east, king from the north, will come in, will move in, right? So from the east will come the armies, from the north will come Russia. So you see Russia is right here, and Jerusalem, Russia, north, and there will be the other Arab uh, nations we spoke about who will all join together, coming in to fight against Israel. So this whole movement is, is very interesting for us when we look at Bible prophecy. All right, so this is just a quick overview of regions of interest. So the Middle East, so what we just quickly covered in this chapter is the Middle East and other regions which are of interest in terms of Bible prophecy, right? So we need to keep an eye on what's happening in all of these parts of the world, how these countries are beginning to interact with each other, how things are slowly being built up towards that final conflict, the Battle of Armageddon.
So let me pause here. Uh, if there are any questions before the break, uh, are you all with me? Uh, is it getting too? It's okay. Are you all following? Uh, Pastor, yes. a small question. Go ahead, please. Um, so, we, in in the last picture which we saw, we saw uh, an army of uh, I think it was two million mm -hmm. uh, coming from uh, uh, north, I believe. East, east. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, in this scenario, we have this. You know, the, the countries are having nuclear weapons, and you know the the heavy machineries. Um, so. So does this mean that uh, people, um, army literally would be coming or uh, the army is still in the country and they would, they might be using the modern technology of war? Yeah, yeah. So we will see a combination of things. So when we go into the book of Revelation, we will see that some of these, the destruction that is described, and it is very interesting actually, because when John is writing, he says, I see smoke like sulfur, red like crimson, and things like that. He describes it. And today we can say, hey, this is the kind of destruction that will be caused by the kinds of weapons we have. The use of nuclear arms, the use of uh, you know, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, uh, even the use of drones coming and attacking. So some of the things that John has described definitely refers to these kinds of weaponry. But as we see happening, there is also movement of land ar uh, armies, you know, which, for example, if you look at what's happening with Russia and Ukraine, yes, there are these fighter jets, and yes, there are these missiles being fired and drones being fired, but to physically take over the land, the army has to move, right? So basically, it's a combination because if you want to try to take over the land, people, your people have to be there physically. Just firing drones will not be enough. You know, your people have to take over. So it's a combination. And interestingly, Revelation describes that both. It describes uh, these these kinds of destruction, which we can only think of from uh, missiles and other weaponry, but it also says the kings of the east will move into Jerusalem, which means that physically they are sending their soldiers because they want their people to come and be in the land, right? So both. The answer is we will see both happening and both are described in Revelation. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Pastor, I've got one quick question here. Uh, Please go ahead. Pastor, over the years, I've heard a lot of uh, interpretations or prophecies about, you know, the the, the forming of the European Union, and you know th that's where this young horn or you know the Antichrist would form up and so on. But but in in this uh, map and with your explanation, so is it would it be like something from the Middle East or, uh, I mean, is there any relationship between that? Yeah. So, what we know from Daniel's prophecies. Is this so? And 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 we will go into the scriptures, you know, in, in the next year when you talk about Daniel. But I'll just summarize this. Based on Daniel's prophecies, from the region that used to belong to the former Roman Empire, there will come ten leaders. So we have to look at where the former Roman Empire covered. It did not cover all of Europe. It covered, like we saw on the map, some parts of Europe, but significant parts of, you, know, you cross the Mediterranean, you come, covered Turkey, Middle East, Northern Africa. So from that region, there will come 10 leaders. So the European Union is of interest because it overlaps with this Roman Empire. But we must be clear that not all of the European Union was part of the Roman Empire. There are countries which belong to the European Union, which did not belong, which were not, which was not, which were not under the Roman Empire. But some of the countries were. 
So that is one thing we have to keep in mind. So the European Union is of interest because it could potentially give to rise to some or maybe even all of the 10 leaders. But it doesn't have to be because they could come even from, you know, you, you look at the Roman Empire, it gets, it gets into parts of uh, the Middle East, Turkey, Syria, all of those. So it, the 10 leaders could come from even those countries. So that's the first thing to keep in mind from scripture. Second thing to keep in mind was Daniel was very specific. He said, the Greek empire will be divided into four parts. This is Daniel chapter 8. The Greek empire will be divided into four parts. And from one of these four parts will come the little horn who speaks great things. That is the Antichrist. So then we have to look now at the Greek Empire, which was the region covered by the Greek Empire. When the Greek Empire was broken, what were the four parts? Again, like I mentioned, very broadly speaking, the area where Greece was, Turkey, region around Syria, and around Egypt. These are the four regions that the Greek Empire was broken into and was later governed by the four uh, generals that Alexander the Great had. And Daniel clearly said, from one of these four areas. So um, now that the Greek part, that includes parts of the European Union. Once we cross the Mediterranean, we come into the other side, the east side of the Mediterranean, which is Turkey, Syria, and northern Africa. Um, they're not part of the European Union, but there is one portion was and is part uh, that is part of the European Union. That side, which today would be uh, Greece and the countries north of it, uh, you know. So that is of interest to us because the, the Antichrist could come from that region or you know Turkey, that part, any one of those four areas that was belonged to the Greek Empire. So that is very clear in Scripture, and so we can look at that. So, uh, are we interested in the European Union? Yes. Uh, are we interested in these other regions? Yes. You know, that are covered by scripture. We need to look at them very carefully. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. okay. We've gone into our break time a little bit. Uh, let's pause here. We'll go for our 10 minutes break. We'll come back and then we'll continue uh, with this. Okay. Thank you, everyone.